Okay, so me and Roxy have been out here talking about this dozer. Not really, she didn't want nothing to do with this dozer, but um, I wanted to show you, this is my dad's TD-15C, and I have been looking all over for, this has the American Bosch, this is a 100 series injector pump, has a rotary head, uh, doesn't have the lines in line. The later 466s had a M and W Bosch. This is, it was an inline pump and it's a different, whole different deal. So don't confuse this with the M and W injector pump or the inline style pump. Uh, one of the big differences is this pump has a smaller gear. So it actually turns a one to one ratio with this engine. Now, when I first saw that, I was like, that doesn't make any sense, but I got to reading about the pump and there are actually three lobes on the camshaft that runs the plunger up and down that pumps the fuel. Now, the distributor head, that's what I call it, I don't know what the book called it, it actually runs half speed. So this pump actually runs uh, the, the input shaft and the governor shaft runs full speed with the engine, one to one. So Therefore, you can time this engine, whether it be on number one or number six, doesn't matter because every time we hit a timing mark, you're either gonna be on one or six. Now, I wanna be careful with that statement because if you've ever pulled the pump and you don't know if you're on one or six, uh, it, if it's 180 out, it won't, it won't run. So there is a timing mark behind the cover here you have to pull this cover. Uh, there's just oil in there, no diesel. But if you pull this cover, there's actually a, a timing mark marked on the case. It's way, it's, it's in a little slot. It's kind of hard to see. I don't have the case apart right now. Um, I'm not gonna take it apart because I just now figured out how to time this thing. I've had it apart like, you gotta, on this one, I gotta pull the winch pump loose. This is a hydraulic pump for the uh, winch so it bolts onto the front of the cover so I have to take that off to get the cover off but the timing on it where was I going with that thought I can't remember now um, back to the timing if you ever pull the pump off and have it rebuilt the pump shop should have it on number one top dead center when they send it back to you and they usually have a little plug with a a little, it's got a little pin on it that holds the pump in place until you install it. So don't pull that out until you get your gear lined up. And, uh, but here's the problem I was having. I was trying to time it off of the, the distributor head timing mark and you can't do that because there's, uh, there's a little bit of slack inside there. It's also got a feature that won't let it run backwards. So if the engine ever turns backwards, the timing mark won't move. So I was trying to time it off of that. I figured out that was wrong. Um, so what I got here, there's a hole. It's kind of hard to see with these hydraulic lines, but there's a plug that goes in this hole right here. And if you look, I've got my little camera. If you look in there, this is my feed off of my camera. Uh, it's just a little cheap camera that connects Wi-Fi to my phone. It's kind of handy sometimes. I've I found it's not very handy a lot of times. But this is the pointer that's stationary to the front of the pump. This is the actual hub of the pump. And I've actually got my timing mark. Let me get a light here. The timing pin on the engine and the balancer is, it's kind of hard to get everything in there, but you can see that pin right there coming off the front of the engine, and there's the marks on the, the harmonic balancer. So I've got it set about 17 degrees because the, the book I found says it should be somewhere between 
15 to 18 depending on your application and I cannot find the application for a TD-15. If somebody knows it, I'd like to know what that is. Uh, the ones I've got are, uh, the book I got shows for tractors. So anyway, I'm gonna set the camera up here. I'm gonna pull this front cover off and show you what's inside. Hopefully, I can show you what's inside here. But this is actually your, uh, these three bolts are actually uh, threaded into a hub that's behind this gear. You can pull these three bolts out, pull this gear out without losing any parts. But um, this gear slotted and you can adjust so many degrees one way or the other from these, uh, if you loosen these three bolts right here. Let me get the light for a little better view. Okay, so there's uh, the center hub. If you, if you ever pull the injector pump off one of these, you probably need to pull this gear off first and then unbolt it and pull it out after you take the lines and everything loose. But in this case, I'm not replacing it, but we've had trouble starting it. So I'm basically just trying to figure out if the timing is the problem, and I think it is. Um, but if you loosen these bolts, you can actually put a 7 8 socket on the, on the inner hub, and you can turn it back and forth. And... Not sure my camera view here is the greatest of what goes on in there. Um, let me turn that. Maybe you can see this, but I'm going to rock the engine back and forth just a little bit. And I'll show you what part of that timing mark moves. So I just turned the engine to, we're sitting right about 8 degrees right there. And that's how far off the timing mark is from the hub. This this pin doesn't move, this hub does. So anyway, once you get this lined up with that, and you could possibly do this with a mirror. Uh, the mirror I got. It's kind of hard to see out of. <laughs> so anyway, I've got it timed. I'm going to put the cover on it. We're going to see how it starts. Uh, this is an interesting pump. I've never gotten into one like this. Uh, it's called the American Bosch 100 series. Like I say, it's uh, it was used on the earlier 466s, probably DT360. Uh, International built a whole series of engines that they use the same pump on. So the timing procedure would probably be the same. The degrees that you're going to set your engine is not. So you'll want to check that and make sure you got the right degrees. But from what I'm understanding, 15 to 18 degrees, it should run pretty good. Now, I think you can actually loosen the bolts that hold the pump on, and you can actually rock the pump back and forth a little bit to get, uh, like if you got it really close, but you don't want to pull the front cover off, you could actually rock that a little bit. Like if I wanted to change it a couple degrees, if I decide that 17 is not where it needs to be, I can actually loosen the three bolts here. I'll have to put my, I'll put my engine back on the timing mark. I'll put my camera back in the hole there, and then I could rock the pump uh, left or right to change timing. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, if you guys got any more information on these than I do, uh, put it in comments. I'd appreciate it. But anyway, here in a minute, I'm going to put this back together, and we're going to see how she starts. It's been starting really hard. You have to use ether even on a warm day. And me and Eric was over here the other day and we messed with it. I had this thing apart three times, retimed it, tried to start it. One time we, I timed it off the mark inside of here and I, we couldn't even get it to start. It wouldn't even run on ether. These are very touchy <coughs> setups. And I think that's because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You have to really be right on the money to get them right. Uh, and I may be wrong about that too, but if it was a one to two ratio, I think you'd have a little bit easier time 
like if you were off the mark a little bit. But this mark was off about, from where we had it running, the last time we had it started, this mark was off about, just guessing, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I'm going to put it back together. I'll quit talking here and we'll see if it will run or start. Also, it's not really been putting out the, the amount of power it should. So I don't know if it's timing. It could be time to replace the injector pump. But where we're at today is we're just, we're trying something out here. So I'm going to just put a few bolts in here. I'm not going to worry about putting the pump back on it until I find out if it starts or not. Um, so I'll just put about three bolts in this front cover, tighten it up, and it'd be good enough just to run it, to or test start it, anyway. Um, find my tools here. Usually engines are pretty easy to time. This one here's had me baffled a little bit, so. But I think we about got her sorted out. But we're getting ready to put new track turn my. Okay, so I'm gonna point you at the exhaust stack. We'll see what happens here. The rain cap off. Turn on the battery switch, set the throttle, contact. Still no start. Little ether. Just a little bit. I'm gonna see, do another test start, just see if it starts up. <laughs> is the right timing we're still not getting a good start so i don't know maybe we could it, it may be time to rebuild the injector pump um, i will tell you this it's a little more responsive to the throttle now engine sounds really good but this hard start deal has been bugging me I don't know what's up with it but I mean it, it, 
The thing sounds pretty smooth, actually. Just running it in the uh, first gear, forward and reverse. It still appears to me that it's not quite right. Something ain't quite right. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure we got it timed right. Try to start it again here. It actually started without ether that time. So it could be maybe I need to advance the timing to 18 or maybe 20. I don't know. Like I say, I can't find a good spec on the TD-15C. That is a big improvement over what we had. So I'm gonna let it run a while and charge the batteries. I've been cranking on it quite a bit, not letting it run very long. So anyway, that's uh, that's it for that video.